new vaccine brings hope in the fight against malaria, while an AI solution predicts earthquakes a week before they happen. And as we find fully accurate ways to discover skin cancer, a long-lost species is making its return to the coasts of England. Welcome to another episode of Good News, where we're all about the things that bring you hope. I'm your host, Regis, and now, let's get right into the good news. We start off with a reminder that the future really is now. Meet Karen. 20 years ago, she lost her hand in a farming accident. Ever since then, she's suffered from what's known as phantom pain, the discomfort an amputee feels for a limb that's no longer there. She was disturbed, needed an increasing amount of painkillers, and suffered from anxiety. Karen tried using prosthetics, but never got used to them. But three years ago, she became the first person to receive a unique bionic arm, which has completely changed her life. A team of engineers and surgeons from around the world created a human-machine interface that allows for an electrical connection with the user's nervous system. This means that the arm is fused directly with Karen's skeleton and nerves, allowing her to control it freely only by using her brain. In Karen's case, it lets her carry out about 80% of daily activities with ease, just like before the amputation. The bionic limb was created by using two titanium rods that were fused with the bone, serving as a connection between the arm and the prosthesis. It now allows Karen to move her prosthesis using nothing but her thoughts while reducing her pain and medication dependence. And it even looks good and can be customized to match its owner's personality. This was actually one of the main goals of the company behind the prosthetic, that the recipient must be proud of it and not ashamed of what was lost. Karen's story is proof that this is possible, and it's also a look into the near future, where such technology will continue to improve the lives of people all over the world. And speaking of technological advancements, researchers at the University of Austin have made significant steps towards reliable earthquake forecasting. During a seven-month trial carried out in China, their AI-powered algorithm was able to predict 70% of earthquakes a full week before they happened. Earthquake forecasting is a discipline that scientists have long wanted to master. With it, governments around the world can minimize human and economic losses by providing advanced warnings to the population. The new AI model is a step in the the right direction. It successfully predicted 14 earthquakes a week before they actually happened in a 350 kilometer radius of their actual location. Additionally, it also accurately calculated their strengths. So how the heck does it work? The AI first learns from historical data based on recordings of previous earthquakes and then combines that with input from experts in the field. Based on these learnings, it then creates forecasts. What's more impressive though is the end goal, to have a plug and play AI predictor model that can be deployed anywhere around the world as needed. Something like ChatGPT, but for earthquakes. Pretty darn cool. AI is changing the world one sector at a time including medicine and personal health, as seen in our next story. A new AI-based solution has achieved a 100% success rate in the early discovery of several types of skin cancer. This could be a decisive step in the fight against the disease, as diagnosing it early is one of the biggest challenges medicine faces today. It's also one of several decisive factors for its successful treatment. Skin cancer is still the most common type of cancer in the world, with two to three million new cases occurring every year. It affects one out of every five Americans by the age of 70. While melanoma is the deadliest one, it's also the rarest. The earlier discovered, the better. Now, the model, which has undergone testing for the past three years, shows a remarkable success rate in detecting melanoma, the most serious type of skin cancer, also responsible for the most deaths. It successfully detected all 59 cases of the disease, while accurately identifying all but one of 190 cases of any skin cancer, as well as more than 90% of precancerous conditions. The study has shown that AI may be the key to developing better diagnosis methods, with the high accuracy being a direct effect of better AI training methods. And while this is a promising step, researchers said that software still can't be used as a standalone tool for diagnosing illnesses, and dermatologists remain the most important part of this process. Our next story takes us underwater, where 10,000 wild oysters were just released off the north coast of England. They weren't just released, however. An innovative conservation project has built artificial reefs which will serve as their new home. The man-made ecosystem was ingeniously created by placing 827 tons of scallop shells on the seabed. 
in order to provide a suitable environment. The initiative is meant to address the decline in oyster populations by restoring their natural habitats. Once native to the coasts of England, their numbers have gone down by about 95% since the 1800s, mainly due to overfishing and pollution. By providing them with new homes to settle, conservationists hope oysters will remain in the area, multiply, and do what they do best, act as natural water filters. Each of them can filter 200 liters of water every day, removing particles, pollutants, and even nitrogen. But there's more to it than that. The artificial reefs not only serve as suitable oyster habitats, but also promote biodiversity. They offer shelter and protection, making them attractive to various species. As a result, these newly established ecosystems have the potential to contribute to a healthier coastal environment. From one green topic to the next, a new report by the International Energy Agency has found that humanity is still on track to limit global warming by 1.5 degrees Celsius. It notes that the adoption of clean energy sources has continued to grow in the past two years, and while more work is needed, the goal is still achievable. According to the report findings, getting there will be challenging due to an ongoing rise in global greenhouse gas emissions and a failure to implement adequate measures against them. But the forecast is now one of increased hope as only several months ago, achieving the 1.5 degree goal was seen as impossible. To reach it, humanity has to continue to adopt green energy sources while reducing its dependence on fossil fuels. This is nothing new. The report notes that advancements were made in this sector, but highlights the need for better international teamwork. Almost all countries must move towards their targeted net zero dates at a better rate, and investments also need to increase substantially, especially in emerging and developing economies. Staying on the right track would then lead to a large increase in clean energy capacity, causing a 25% drop in the demand for fossil fuels by the end of the decade. This would result in a 35% reduction in emissions compared to the highest levels recorded in 2022. By 2050, the demand for fossil fuels would see a massive decline of 80%. At least, that's the conclusion of this report. Our next story tackles another global problem, but with more decisive results. The World Health Organization has recommended the use of a new and affordable malaria vaccine developed by the University of Oxford. Because it's only the second one ever created, this new vaccine is a real game changer. Malaria is a deadly disease, especially for babies and young children. In 2021, 247 million cases were recorded and more than 619,000 were fatal, most of them children under five. Over 95% of the cases occur in Africa, but the new vaccine called R21 is proving to be 75% effective in areas where the disease is seasonal, which is similar to the first vaccine in those regions. What's really revolutionary about this vaccine, however, is that it can be produced on a large scale. R21 is more cost-effective, with each dose costing between two and four dollars, about half the price of the first vaccine. They both use similar technologies and target the same stage of the malaria parasite's life cycle, but the new one is easier to manufacture as it requires a smaller dose. It's also much more easily deployable. As such, the world's biggest vaccine maker, an institute in India, is planning to manufacture up to 200 million doses in a year. For context, only 18 million doses from the first vaccine have ever been created, and it's been around since 2021. Thus, it's easy to see why the new vaccine can change everything and how it could save thousands of lives in the process. In our final story of this episode, we share a step away from violence and towards human rights in Mauritius. The Supreme Court of Mauritius has declared that a law that violently criminalized same-sex relationships between men is unconstitutional. The decision means that people can no longer be arrested or punished by the government for having homosexual relationships. In a broader sense, the judgment also emphasized every citizen's constitutionally protected right to non-discrimination in Mauritius. The Mauritian Criminal Code, which dates back to 18 38 during the British colonial period imposed harsh penalties for same-sex relationships, carrying a maximum prison sentence of five years for those convicted. And even though it was not enforced in recent years, the law persisted even after its removal in England in 1967. Mauritius gained its independence the following year, but kept the ban on same-sex relationships active for a time. As such, this ruling effectively dismantles 185 years of state-sanctioned criminalization and even violence against gay people in Mauritius. And that's our show for the week. 
Let us know in the comments which one of these stories you think is the most important development and why. For more uplifting stories, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Thank you as always for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode of Good News.